I have a secret. I wore the wrong foundation for years. Then I discovered Il Maquillage. Their AI-powered quiz makes it so easy to find a perfect match, customized for your unique skin tone, undertone, and coverage needs. With 600,000 five-star reviews and 50 shades of flawless natural coverage, this foundation is going viral for a reason. And with Try Before You Buy, you can try your full size at home for 14 days. Take the quiz at ilmakiage.com slash quiz. That's I-L-M-A-K-I-A-G-E dot com slash quiz. Hello and welcome to mini episode 374 of Real Life Ghost Stories and I have two spooky stories for you today and the last story comes from the 2nd of July 2024 and story number one comes from Clara Cherry. As someone with a long-standing affinity for the unknown, the paranormal has always been my cup of tea. My family, you see, has always been somewhat sensitive to the paranormal, particularly on my mother's side. Growing up, this had me thinking that much of what others considered spooky stuff was actually quite normal. This perspective even influenced how I viewed scary movies, often thinking that certain plot lines were entirely plausible. As I consider my family's history intertwined with lore, nature and the paranormal, I wonder which of our many stories to share first. Creepy kids or perhaps something about dolls? Decisions, decisions. For now, let's start with a charming incident from January 27th, 2020. On this particular morning, my then four-year-old grandson excitedly told his mom about his recent visit with yours truly, his grandma. She promptly shared his story to me via text that same day. According to my grandson, he had a blast playing in the yard with me, zipping around on a scooter with me pushing him and later going inside to play with my puppies. He even mentioned a conversation we had about a purse. On the surface, it all sounds pretty ordinary, right? However, the night before, my house was the stage for some strange activity. Flickering lights, coloured orbs dancing around the room, and peculiar energy fields were just some of the phenomena I encountered. Despite my attempts to communicate with these entities... All I was met with was silence. Given these events, I decided to delve deeper into my grandson's story. I asked him several questions via my daughter, and his answers were nothing short of fascinating. I asked my daughter what time did he go to bed, and she replied that he went to bed at 8pm, which is late for him. So he would have been in a really deep sleep at the time I experienced the peculiar activity at my house. I asked him where we played, your house or someplace else. My daughter replied that since he is only four, she asked him what colour the house was that he saw Glamour in. His response was pink. I asked him what colour the purse was and why my purse, and my daughter responded that he wouldn't name a colour, but said he wears it on his back and he calls it a kitty cat purse. His mention of the kitty cat purse startled me. My mother, affectionately called Grummy by my children, had made me a similar purse years ago. I hadn't seen it in ages, so this detail left me amused and astonished. Fast forward to a few months later in March 2020, I found that very purse at the bottom of my closet, evidently untouched since 2004 based on a receipt found inside. I promptly snapped a picture of the purse and sent it to my daughter. When she showed the picture to her son, he instantly recognised it, exclaiming, That's your mommy's kitty purse. Now, let me clarify a few things. My grandson wasn't exactly a chatterbox at four. His mother did her best to get the details about his adventure without influencing his response. I do live in a pink house in Michigan. Not my colour choice, hence rarely are there any shared pictures with the house in the background. My daughter and her family reside states away in Kansas, 
and although we visited them, the grandkids have never been to our house in Michigan. Also, let's not forget that Kansas is, in time zones, an hour behind Michigan and a whopping 827 miles separate our homes. When my daughter asked her son if he had seen the purse from the photo before, he enthusiastically replied, Yeah, when I go to see your mommy. So here's the question that will chill your bones. Could the orbs and energy fluctuations I experienced, coupled with my grandson's uncanny tale, be evidence of astral travel? If so, I cannot wait for his next visit. One spookily delightful midday of December the 19th, 2019, my granddaughter, affectionately known as Nuna, had just awoken from a nap. Nuna, a 14-month-old toddler at the time, rejoicing in her own little world, was heard by my daughter, her mother, engaging in a lively chat with an unseen friend she fondly referred to as Spooky Wesley. Now, you must know that we in the family have had our share of encounters of the paranormal kind. We even talk about these experiences openly, so much so that my grandkids lovingly refer to ghosts as spookies. On hearing Nuna's banter, my daughter promptly texted, So, Nuna woke up from a nap, apparently. She's in her room, happily chatting with Spooky Wesley. As the story unfolded, my daughter pondered aloud, I think Grumps is visiting. Now, Grumps, short for Grumpy, is what my children lovingly called my father, their grandfather. Then, from the depths of Nuna's room, a girlish giggle pierced the silence. In her sweet, innocent voice, she declared, you not spooky, you a spooky. It was evident that my dear father had tread lightly, ensuring not to frighten his precious great-granddaughter. Minutes ticked by, then Nuna was heard calling out in concern, Spooky Wesley, where are you? A pause hung in the air before her tone changed to one of delight. Oh, there you are, Spooky Wesley. Then came the summoning. Come here, Spooky Wesley. Come here. And then the giggling. Oh, there you are. I love you. A delightful mix of fun and spookiness filled the silence. My daughter, fascinated by this interaction, couldn't help but say, She was literally summoning Grumpy. I always knew he was a softy for his girls, but damn. Now, interestingly enough, Grumpy, or Spooky Wesley, passed away ten months before Nuna's birth. We believe that he just didn't want to miss out on getting to know his first great-granddaughter. Fast forward to April 2024. I shared three pictures of my father at different stages of his life with my daughter and asked her to show them to Nuna without mentioning who they were. To our surprise, Nuna pointed to one and said, Yep, that's Spooky Wesley. The picture she recognised was a family photo from 1970, when he would have been 37. It was quite astonishing when I sent a couple more pictures of my dad, this time in his early 20s. Nuna, ever so matter-of-factly, responded, That's the one. I was taken aback because I had never known my father at that age. He was 37 when I was born. It's fascinating to learn that Grumpy presents himself as the handsome young man he once was. My daughter mused, That's how he always saw himself, and it made perfect sense. And so, even in the spectral afterlife, Grumpy, I mean our dear old spooky Wesley, continues to be a part of our lives, reminding us that love transcends all boundaries, even those of the otherworldly kind. Thank you so much for sharing this Glamma's heartwarming tales of love and innocence with a dash of spookiness. Until I share again, remember, the ones we love never truly leave us, they live on in our hearts. And sometimes in our playrooms. Before we dive into these stories, I need to issue yet another apology because I missed Clara Cherry's stories. Unfortunately, I had mislabeled her stories and they had sat in the wrong folder and look, it happens, you know? So if you are listening to the podcast and you're thinking, hang on, the 2nd of July, I'm pretty sure I set my story before the 2nd of July. Do give me a nudge. Give me a nudge and say, and I think you might have missed my story. Sometimes people don't send it to the right email address, right? Because real life ghost stories is a tricky thing to spell all together because I, I do it all the time where you end up missing letters or adding extra letters or skipping letters, whatever. 
So that happens. But also sometimes I just don't see them, whether it's that I see them first thing in the morning in a sleepy haze and categorize them wrong, or sometimes they go into spam. But this time it was me. I categorized this story wrong. Hence why it took me so long to get it onto an episode. So my apologies to the lovely Clara Cherry. Listen, just give me a nudge. And if I've read out your story and you've missed it, I'll just be able to send you the episode that it's in. So no biggie. But aside from that, I mean, first of all, how sweet is it for your grandson to wake up and be like, I just had a visit with my grandma. It's just, honestly, kids are just so cute sometimes. I know, I know that I'm always talking about them being creepy and kicking them down the stairs, but they are also incredibly sweet. I also love that in this dream state, the things that he, that he did with you were really sweet like playing in the yard going around in a scooter with grandma pushing him and then going inside to play with puppies and having a little chat about a purse like so ordinary and sweet and lovely until you realize that it you know didn't actually happen in this reality and we've talked about astral planning and you know out of body experiences on the podcast before and i do find it really intriguing And adults who write in about astral planning and out-of-body experiences often say that they felt frightened when they realised, you know, that their spirit, soul, essence, whatever the heck you want to call it, was looking down at their own body asleep in the bed and they're thinking, oh my God, how do I get back into my body? What if I can't? Etc. Whereas with kids, kids are more accepting and less frightened of things that they don't understand or things that defy the laws of physics and biology, etc, etc. So is it possible that your grandson was astral planning and was like, do you know what? I'm going to go see grandma. That's what I'm going to do. Hence the flickering lights, the colored orbs that you saw that night. Is it possible that his little spirit, his soul, his essence, I don't know what you call it, but whatever it was, was actually in Michigan in your house that night. Hence all the disturbances and hence why you weren't able to communicate with this entity because it wasn't an entity, it was just your grandson's little lessons bopping around, playing with puppies and whatever else he was doing. I think that story is incredibly sweet, incredibly endearing. And the second story about your granddaughter is also incredibly endearing. Like this is this is how paranormal experiences should happen. Where you're a little bit removed from the actual event, so it doesn't doesn't get that creep factor of you being in the same room and you can appreciate it for being a lovely sweet story rather than something that is absolutely horrendous. What I find really interesting about this story is that Spooky Wesley appeared to your granddaughter as a younger version of himself, a 37 year old version of himself and I've thought about that you know from time to time about what happens when you die. Do you get to choose what form of yourself that you are or maybe it's a case that you are the form of yourself that was like happiest healthiest you know most carefree and I think it's a lovely thing to think that the ones the ones that we love that we lose never really leave us you know as as long as they continue to present themselves with a certain degree of separation and less less terrifying spookiness Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom. Like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. I have a secret. I wore the wrong foundation for years. Then I discovered Il Maquillage. Their AI-powered quiz makes it so easy to find a perfect match, customized for your unique skin tone, undertone, and coverage needs. With 600,000 five-star reviews and 50 shades of flawless natural coverage, this foundation is going viral for a reason. And with Try Before You Buy, you can try your full size at home for 14 days. Take the quiz at ilmaquillage.com quiz. That's I-L-M-A-K-I-A-G-E dot com slash quiz. And strain number two comes from Jess. My aunt and uncle live on an island off the coast of Scotland. An island well known for its folklore and roots in paganism. I grew up in Glasgow, 
but I spent many summers and many various other holidays with my grandmother, both of us staying with my aunt and uncle. Their home is a gorgeous self-built wooden house, in a lovely part of the island, tucked away from the tourists with a small community of neighbours. The room I often stayed in was on the second floor, with a window next to the bed overlooking the croft. In the very near distance was a field attached to the neighbour's house. In this field is a decent sized hill with a single lone tree atop. It was in this room that I had my first sleep paralysis experience. But the creepy dream started first. It wasn't every night. It wasn't even particularly scary in the beginning and sometimes I could go an entire summer in that house without experiencing anything. But the nights that I did experience those night terrors, it was the same every single time. I would walk to the window and see a woman, standing on the hill, gazing at me. The field with the hill is only a mere two minute walk away close enough to make out somebody's features if they were standing on the hill. Yet this woman was a blur. I distinctly remember her long grey hair and hunchback. I would look at her with concern and then feel as if she was watching me. And then I would wake up to the smell of burning in my room. The dreams continued, but every so often the woman would change locations. In every dream I would get up out of my bed and walk to the window. She could be standing atop the hill, she could be standing on the road outside, she could be standing in the garden, she could even be standing right outside the window. It sounds ridiculous and so far-fetched and honestly seems like something the protagonist of a horror movie would experience. I never told anybody about these dreams. I was always an anxious, restless child, but it was put down to me reading too many books and watching too much television. These dreams would continue, sometimes with a few days weeks or even years in between. Only in that house. But the situation escalated in the summer that I was 15. It was the beginning of the lockdown. I was dealing with a lot of bullying at school and struggled a lot with my mental health. My mum made the decision to send me up to my aunt and uncle just before the lockdown was put in place. I had a great summer with my family and friends away from school and social media and surrounded by nature. But this strange woman in my dreams plagued me. She occupied my thoughts every time I would visit the island. I think I grew so anxious about her returning that it manifested into night terrors and sleep paralysis. The dreams began again almost instantly, with the woman outside the window in various locations, with each dream she got closer and closer. Until eventually I experienced my first paralysis. I was stuck in bed choked with the smell of burning, with the lady standing in the hall staring at me. I still couldn't make out any of her features. I've no idea why. If she was blurry, hooded, masked or something, I honestly can't remember. All she would do was stand and stare at me. I don't think she meant any harm, maybe just curiosity. But she terrified me. I've always been obsessed with the paranormal, so this shook me to my fucking core, I would spend every day with the hair on the back of my neck standing, constantly looking over my shoulder. I was so scared of her that I developed vivid nightmares, although sometimes I wonder if they were actually dreams or not. I would be in my bed, suffocated with the smell of burning, and I would hear her walk down the hall. Step. Drag. Step. Drag. As if she was limping. She would reach my door, stand still for a few moments, and then I'd wake up. This was all that would happen for a while. Every few nights I'd have this god-awful dream, but again things got worse. I would hear her limping. In the house. Out on a walk. Anywhere. I would hear that step and drag somewhere in the distance and the smell of burning. That was all that ever happened, though. A year or so later, once Covid restrictions eased, I brought a close friend with me to house sit for my aunt and uncle. We slept on a blow-up mattress in the living room and I was completely at ease, as, to be honest, I'd forgotten all about the creepy woman. Until one night we were watching a scary movie. I can't remember what movie it was, but for some reason it inspired us to check a website that supposedly would show us how many days we both had left before we would die. A social media stunt to promote something, obviously, but the website showed us both that we each had two days. We laughed, scared shitless of course, and then my friend got a phone call from an unknown number. 
Being the super clever teenagers we were, she answered it. It was silent for a moment and then hung up. Again, we laughed at the badly timed scam call. And then the power went out. I shit you not. The lights, the TV, the electricity, everything. We also had absolutely no signal or Wi-Fi. It was the middle of nowhere. None of the other houses that we could see had lost power. But we were too scared to leave the house to ask for help. I'm not sure how my friend felt through this ordeal as she kept her composure and tried to laugh everything off. But I was absolutely shitting bricks, crying and everything. But we rode the night out until the power came back and swiftly decided it was time for bed. I slept soundly that night, surprisingly. I remember because I woke up saying that was the best sleep of my life, considering how uncomfortable the air mattress was. My friend was really quiet. She said she was fine, but after I pestered her for a while, she announced that she woke up in the middle of the night to the curtains on the patio door wide open and a dark figure with a hunched back standing in the garden facing us. She was frozen in terror as she'd been to the house with me before and knew it was a lovely safe community. She said she knew it was just a dream as when we woke up the curtains were closed, but it felt so real. The rest of the week was completely uneventful, and looking back on it, it most likely definitely was just a series of total coincidences, dramatised by teenage girls who had been binging horror movies in the middle of nowhere. Fast forward to the present day. I've never experienced anything like it, aside from the odd shadow figure here and there. I'd forgotten all about the woman in my dreams. That is, until a while ago I stumbled across an article on Facebook. I won't share it for the sake of my family's privacy, but it's out there. It was telling us about how in the 1700s an old beggar woman on the island knocked on a house for help, only to be trapped by the man of the house who accused her of being a witch. He held her there and brutally tortured her. And I shit you not, the house this happened in is my uncle's neighbour's house. The one with the tree on top of the hill. The land my uncle's house is built on would have been part of his property back then. Part of his torture included the poor woman being bound and her feet held to an open fire. It's said that she lost some of her toes as a result. Now I'm almost certain that losing one's toes in this way could cause a certain limp and perhaps be accompanied by a certain burning smell, right? The woman escaped the house and apparently crawled around that area of the island looking for help before succumbing to her injuries 12 days later. This is all included in the official court documents from the time. The evil monster that did this to her was never punished for his crime. And as far as I'm aware, her story has never been told until now. Ever since discovering her story, I feel guilty about ever being scared of her. She was just upset, scared and angry and in pain. She was looking for help and was cruelly punished for crimes that she didn't commit. I can't blame her for trying to reach out in the way that she did. To this day, I have only shared this story with my closest of friends and the occasional drunk stranger at a party. I've never spoken to my family or friends from the islands as they're all very religious and I would expect to be mocked or shunned about what I experienced, so I have no idea if anybody else experienced the same as I did. But if any of said friends and family are listening to this and recognise me from this story, please feel free to reach out if you were also visited by this woman. I would love to know that I wasn't the only one. It's been a few years, and my amazing boyfriend and I are actually travelling to my aunt and uncle's house to house it for a week. We leave in five days. I'm not sure if the lady will visit me again, but if anything exciting happens, I will write again. Oh, that story has given me the heebie-jeebies. The minute you said, hill with a lone tree, woman standing on top and a smell of burning, I was like, this woman was real and this woman was accused of being a witch for sure. We know from history that um, in Scotland, a huge amount of women were accused of witchcraft and tortured and executed because of these accusations and remember you know as you guys know these accusations could range from anything from the woman just not being married to their neighbor just not liking her to her being a herbal healer i mean pick a reason 
and you can pretty much assume that somebody was accused of witchcraft for that reason this sounds like this man had this woman knocking on his door and realized he had an opportunity to torture this woman and in reality nobody was going to care about a maligned beggar woman in society oh it makes me so cross who it makes me so angry but this story is so terrifying i know like you said jess you felt bad about you know the fact that she that you were scared of her that she was probably in pain and scared and angry and christ knows she has every reason to be but also i would be scared if i was dreaming and seeing a woman with long gray hair and a hunchback getting closer and closer to my room and with a smell of burning and sleep paralysis and all of that and like you said you know she didn't seem to be malevolent she didn't seem to be threatening maybe she just wanted to be seen maybe she just wanted to be noticed imagine you die in this horrific way looking for help for 12 days and you die and the man who inflicted these injuries on you doesn't even doesn't like nothing happens to him he doesn't get in any sort of trouble there are no consequences to his actions let me tell you now i would not be a benevolent haunting if that was how i went because i would be burning those houses to the ground from the afterlife in a way like i always say with these stories i'm glad that your friend experienced it too so that you could get a justification and be like okay so yes this has happened to me but yes this seems to be not just dreams or just nightmares or just sleep paralysis if your friend saw it too maybe this woman is her only way of communicating is in dreams maybe that's the simplest way because in your dreams you're more vulnerable right or you're more open to experiencing things or seeing things or maybe you're more spiritually connected or whatever it is and either way I'm glad, A, that you came across this article about this woman and you were able to figure out her story because I I do believe it's the same woman. And I'm glad that we were able to share her story and say, we see you, what happened to you was unjust, it should not have happened, there should have been consequences, you did not deserve to die in that way. What a fantastic story. I'm going to stop talking about witch trials now and witches because if I... If I get on a roll talking about the witch trials, I just will not stop. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Thank you to Clara, Cherry and Jess for sending in your stories. Remember, the last story came from the 2nd of July, 2024. And if you would like to send in your story, you can do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast.gmail.com. You can also check out the website, reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And if you are desperate for some extra content, you can subscribe to the Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash reallifeghoststories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get access to heaps of extra content, as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad-free. And on that note, I shall see you next time. Bye.